Hello there, boys and girls. Apologies that it has been so long since my last upload. With this one being my 500th PA video, give or take, 500th uh, numbered PA video, um, I wanted to make a particular project for this video, um, which is why I've held off on uploading all the videos that are going to follow this one, um, because I wanted to mark the 500th, but I may as well do it like this for now, um, with it being, what, five or something like that, or approaching five years, in fact, no, five years since um, the PA Alpha, um, but yeah, the project that I wanted to do is going to take a bit longer than I had anticipated and require a bit more focus and effort uh, and motivation than I had anticipated, and given my current commitments, uh, that's very difficult to arrange and sort out at the moment, um, along with other circumstances that I find myself in. So I apologize for that, but it is something that's on my to-do list, uh, and it will come eventually, whether or not it's now or, or whenever it'll be. Um, also, watch out for some news on Able Gamers 2018. That is going to be a thing, and we hope to get some news out to you before too long, uh, so we'd like to make it something of a of an event this year, um, especially with um, the whole news around surrounding PA's second wind, etc. So we're really hoping to make Able Gamers a massive improvement this year. So stay tuned for that. And in the meantime, enjoy these videos that I've been putting off uploading for a fair while. Apologies for that, and uh, I hope you enjoy them. Of course, as always, any feedback is welcome in the comments. And, uh, well, enjoy. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Marshall here with round one of the Community Command Donuts 1v1 Blind Tournament. Which is a Swiss-style tournament with all new maps that the players have not seen prior to playing their respective rounds. In this one, we've got Admiral General in white on the north. Building up his queue there, bots first. Saw a couple of mechs into the P-Gens Air Factory, P-Gens Further Bot Factory. And going down, we've got Antrex. Also allegedly a very good player. Admiral General, of course, has a very strong history in PA. Very well-known and respectable name. Antrex going bots first. Using the commander for a 1-1 into Bot Factory there. Using the other bots to go around and get some other mechs in the area. Looks like this commander is going to be pushing forwards. So maybe try and claim some of this area here and build some more factories here, closing the gap between the two bases. And while they do that, you can see their uh, builds in the respective pictures in pictures. So a quick overview of the map. For the benefit of the VOD, rather than uh, for the stream per se, because we've already done that, but uh, this is Training Grounds. A map made by Pwn for Two specifically for this tournament. You've got these two lanes between the bases. Very nice warm-up, so to speak, for the first round in this tournament. Nice spacious mechs. Nice to lock down, push around the sides, force your way up, grab as much as you can. Even come down here and try and grab this high concentration of metal around these, uh, these ruins over here. Equally, on the other side of the planet, you've also got this little island here where you can send some air fabs or some, drop some fabricators from some pelicans. The choice is yours. So, it looks like we're going to go very bot-heavy between these two players, which surprises me, actually. You'd expect to have some form of vehicle transition in the not-too-distant future. Bots, of course, to open out is very strong, especially because of their uh, movement speed and ability to dance around and maybe pick off a cheeky fabricator where and when they can. Good to see some Firefly Scouts also coming out for Admiral General, so that's going to give him some massive vision range as to the area around him. Let's just have a look at what he can see now as a result of that. Massive area there. That gives him a big advantage. And he doesn't even need to have radar uh, with uh, Fireflies going around like that as long as he can maintain that coverage. And Admiral General being as good as he is, he uh, has the ability to manage that attention span and 
keep abreast of all the developments in the game. So we've got a couple of little bits of raiding here. A few bombers getting rid of uh, some aggressive docks. It's very easy to defend this sort of a base this early on in the game, where you've only got really three main approaches. Your back end is uh, completely safe. Unless, of course, your opponent decides to go for drifters and some early T2 bots from Antrex. And quite a rush for it as well. Three fabs and a commander rushing it up. We've already got uh, 30 or so extra mechs in lead there from Antrex. Admiral General playing a distinctly more defensive game, it would seem. Antrex, though, just merging to get a Galata up there, saving that fabricator, mm -hmm. dancing him around as, uh, as he's going to go for the uh, the expansion. But he's going to have to fall back a little bit or lose the fab to an annoying little spark there. Ticking that off. And this actually isn't good for him because that'll lose that entire expansion there. And it also potentially leaves this whole area open. Sparks are, of course, pretty decent against the docks, certainly in the early game, against these sort of small raiding platoons. And the bomber harass is going to be something that Antrax really wants to sort out. I'd like to see a vehicle transition with some uh, spinners coming out. We've got his vehicle factory up and ready now. Might see something produced from that very, very soon indeed. Our T2 factory is ready miles ahead of Admiral General. Now, that is important. Is Admiral aware that it is complete? Yes, he is. And as a result... Lots of frantic fabs on the T2 factory up on the north side. I quite also like what Admiral General is doing here, which is uh, locking down just the odd cheap defensive turret around uh, just to defend these bits of mechs as he expands out. And the economy game has turned a little bit here. Not too much of a disparity, but Admiral General now leading thanks to these raids that he's put in on the side and uh, down the middle there as well. Radar still stands, which is very fortunate for Antrex. These bombers here. Antrex not going for the air game gives Admiral General the opportunity to really just go bomber heavy and not worry about interceptors. Antrex might want to revisit that uh, tactical decision later on into the game, especially as Admiral General perhaps pushes up into T2 air, but I doubt that we'll need T2 air in this game. In fact, I suspect it won't be too long once the T2 bots are up that perhaps we see a T2 vehicle factory going up. But the slammers are out on the field now. The spinners are there for the anti-air support as well, but this spread out is both a blessing and a curse. It makes it harder for the spinners to really defend, but at the same time it makes it harder for the bombers to really do their dirty work. And there we saw all of Admiral General's bombers vaporized. And now it turns to Antrex to really make this attack count before Admiral General can uh, get out some defensive units as a T2 bot factory is almost complete at this point. Can Antrex do enough raiding? The slammers should just about give him that opportunity. Lost a couple there to a couple of docks. And that needs to give the spinner a chance to catch up. The bomber gets shot down by the docks instead. Yeah, no spinners needed today. More and more bot factories coming out from Antrex. Why so many docks? Why not the uh, vehicle transition? Ah, we have a pause. Sorry, one sec. Your second has expired. Looks like we've got a good amount of support for Antrex in chat. Seb. 202, Antrex pour la victoire. PA guy drawing attention to Admiral General for 100% pro play. And even this, the commander pushing out down into the middle. This is a risky play. What could he be planning with this? Will he be putting up some vehicle factories around here? And we are starting to see a few more tanks mixed into Admiral General. And we're off again. So perhaps we're going to use this commander to really put some pressure on Antrax, but uh, there we go. Look at that. Vehicle factory, straight up. 
Am I a genius? <laughs> no, I just did psychology and I know exactly what these players are thinking. And I also know what you as viewers are thinking. Because if I say, pink elephants on roller skates, chances are you just thought of pink elephants on roller skates. Ha ha. So, as I was saying, this is a bit risky for Admiral General, especially with so many slammers on the field. He needs to be able to hold those off. The economic pendulum has swung back again to Antrex, now in the lead, although stalling at the same time, perhaps overproducing just a little bit. Needs to get up the T2 economy in his base, which he's trying to do there. And no one's gone around here, so I wonder how long it's going to be before Antrex sends a, a single uh, or two fabbers to go over and... Uh, collect all of those. Let's have a look at the army tabs there. Admiral General down a bit by 50 units, almost exactly. Needs to make the air count, but there are just a few too many spinners in there to really make it happen. He needs to mix up his strategies at this point, and can I point out, T2 bots, T2 bots, lava, Locusts, straight into the back, straight through all the main production, straight to the T2 factory, while this pushes out here, as long as Admiral General can defend while he does it. But it doesn't look as though he is opting for that strategy. Which is a shame. I would have liked to have seen some uh, Locust backdoors. No doubt there will have been some in this round. Here we go. No spaghetti strats in this corridor. As we've gone for the broadside from Antrex. Moving across and then in. Poking a little with the slammers. Picking away at those ants that do not have the range for the slammers, really. And instead of taking the army head on, look at this, look at this, look at this. Going around the mountain instead. But in come the bombers as Admiral realises the anti-air is not with the army, and look at that. Down go all those bullet spongy docks. And only a handful of slammers remain there. This is what Admiral General needs to do. He needs to hold off. He doesn't want to push in here. He doesn't want to give chase. Uh, you guys... having a, some form of hallucination? There's, there's nothing over there. I don't know. I don't know what he's shooting at. Maybe he's drunk. All the same. <laughs> Unless someone's been playing some Counter-Strike and is just trying to pre-fire. Oh my gosh, it's working! Look at that, the odd shot is actually working! <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> yeah, trying to get some reclaim there from Admiral General, but with fabbers rather than combat fabs, it's a bit of a risky one, that one. A few mines placed over there from the combat fabs, but this push, I think, is going to seal the deal. No units for Admiral General, only the commander, surrounded, and boom. Postmortem. Get to T2 faster, Admiral General. <laughs> Antrix was very good, though. Decided to forego air almost entirely, allowing him to push forward with even more ground factories. And uh, all he needed was a few of those, those spinners. And that allowed him to really push forward and defend against that air. That's so why Admiral General went for the more conventional build. I feel as though Antrex perhaps adapted better to the blind map. Don't go anywhere, as round two is about to begin. <laughs> 